my name is Sherry Blessing and you are watching the Power Talk Show. This evening we are having a conversation on some one one conversation of a topic that I think most people are interested in or they're afraid of, but they don't really understand. So I want us to demystify marriage tonight, and I want us to really understand what is marriage, what goes into it, and what are some of the things that you need to learn if you want to get into a successful marriage. So I'm joined by two experts on set. I have Esther Odor here with me, who is a counselor, and she's not even a first-time guest. She's been here, but some time back. Kaributana Esther, how are you doing? And I've just named one of your titles. So <laughs> you have a few other titles as well. But we're focusing on the counselor because yeah. that's what we're talking about. Next to Esther, we have Dennis, who is also a marriage counselor. And uh, you're well today? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, Thank it's such a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have both of you here. And uh, I'm so excited because this is a, uh, it's a conversation that, as I was telling my guests before, I think so many people are afraid of, but they don't truly understand the concept, especially if you're not in a marriage. Sometimes even if you're in a marriage, you may not truly understand how to deal with some issues or how to go about certain situations. So that's what we're focusing on tonight. We are demystifying marriage, and I want to engage with you back home. Mnyambie, by going to our platforms, at Y254. Let me know uh, what you think about this conversation and I've asked you a question. Would you consider getting married? Is it something that you consider? Do you consider marriage? Is it something that you see in your future? I want you to go to our platforms right now at Y254 and let me know what you think about this. Then we will come back and sample some of the comments that you've shared as we progress with the conversation. So to kickstart the conversation, because we have two amazing guests who are both in the, in the field of counseling, but I'm wondering, um, are our guests married as well? Because we want to, to figure that out. Esther, are you married? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm married. Yeah, yes. and how many years of marriage uh, have you gone through? It's been 10 years of marriage Yeah. with uh, two girls. That's and amazing. Yeah. That's really wonderful. Thank you so what much. What about you, Dennis? Uh, I've been married for two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have a lovely baby girl. Mm. Yes, and uh, it's wonderful being a father. I yeah. can say that I'm uh, reaping one of the benefits of uh, actually being married and... Uh, if um, young people are, are fearing marriage, mm -hmm. it's because they do not understand what there is to gain from marriage. Yeah. Because a lot of the time you, or there's a, there's a common saying that says, you always fear what you don't understand. Yeah. So when you don't understand the concept of marriage or what, what marriage is all about, you'll always be afraid. But uh, I'm glad that we have platforms like this, this when, where we can talk about marriage yeah. And at least enlighten them on what it uh, takes, and it is not. You don't have to be afraid to to be married or to marry. Yeah. Yeah. And I I, I really love what you've said. First, I'll go back to one of the benefits you're reaping from marriage is having yeah. a wonderful daughter. Yeah. And being a proud father is one thing that we truly admire. True. So on set, we have parents to daughters <laughs> yes. who are, have been married for a total of 12 years, if we yeah. add it together. <laughs> true, true, true. Sure. <laughs> and it's so amazing because so many people, when they think about marriage, as yeah. Dennis has said, mm -hmm. they fear what they don't understand, what true. they don't know. Because true. they have, we all have misconceptions, we yeah. have ideologies, we have an idea of what yeah. we think about marriage yeah. but we may not truly understand what marriage is mm -hmm. and I'm wondering because you've been in marriage for some time yeah. did you know exactly what it would take mm -hmm. Esther before you got married yeah. your ideas versus the reality yeah did they align are they similar I'm only yeah. Stuka. <laughs> thank you so much first of all for the opportunity to be here at your studio and um, I'm just so grateful even uh, to share this topic on demystifying marriage so coming to your question basically is um, it is like you're asking me what I ordered versus what I, I, I got you know, yeah. what I, I de was delivered. But basically I would say that uh, no one is always so sure about the future except mm. on what you're told or on the facts on the ground. And then now when you're uh, someone who believes in God or has faith in Christ, then you can have the hope of the future. So for me, yeah, there's so much I was told in marriage, but then there's the, the section that was never, I think nobody, they were not in a position to explain, even the marriage counselors that are there, because 
there are certain life uncertainties that happen. So the marriage counselor can only take you to the extent of what they have experienced or what the society has seen. Yeah. But sometimes this journey of life, each and every one of us faces it uniquely, in a unique way that might totally be different from yours because God has different plans and purposes for each and every one of us. So you find your challenge may be totally different from mine. Yeah. So if you went with it with somebody's experience, then you realize that you're not going even to apply what you are told. So it comes to a point where by now you're leaning on God as you walk on the journey. Mm. So basically I would say partly we are, I can, I can uh, see that which I was taught or I was expecting in marriage, but as I journey through, I realize that it is more of now God walking through the journey and leaning on me to guide you, leaning on it to guide you and to show you that this is the right way, my daughter, my son, and follow yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I would say. And truly, marriage is unique for each yeah. and every person because it's True. based on the individuals in the True. situation and no two situations are the same. Yeah. They may be similar, but yeah. they're not exactly yeah. the same. So some of the things that you learn from someone else's situation may not necessarily apply yeah. to, yours. to yours. And uh, Dennis, you know marriage for, for girls is usually a fairy tale that we have <laughs> from when we were kids. We've dreamed about it our whole lives. <laughs> But what about guys? Because I know most guys don't really think about marriage up until you get to a point where you're like, okay, now I'm old enough. Maybe yeah. I need to get married. Maybe so, I need to settle down. So, so. Did you, were you thinking about marriage before you met your wife? Um, funny enough, um, uh, for my situation, before, like, uh, when I was a bit younger, I was very disinterested in uh, anything to do with marriage because I'm like, uh, from what I've heard or from what I've observed, Marriage is the man providing this, providing that. I'm not quite ready financially to do all that. I don't want all that responsibility, so I was uh, quite disinterested in the topic. Mm -hmm. But eventually what happened for me, uh, my personal experience, uh, I got born again. Mm -hmm. And uh, it changed everything in my life. Because now things started taking uh, a turn where like uh, now I'm interested in things I was not interested before. I am seeing things that I did not see before. So that uh, the, the, the relationship that I started getting with God changed even uh, now me wanting to achieve a higher purpose in life. Yeah. And it changed a lot because now I understood, like uh, I started asking myself, my parents are telling me about marriage, you know, what is this marriage? Yeah. How do I get to know like what this marriage is? And uh, being now a believer, that put a lot of things into context because um, uh, I started realizing that life, there's more to life than what I was doing currently. Yeah. Because uh, the responsibility of man is, uh, is mon monumental. I mean, like uh, we here now, like she's, uh, she's a mother to two girls, I'm a father to, to a girl. So that means we are raising the next generation. And that is monumental because um, Marriage uh, per se, from the beginning of where it began from in uh, Genesis 2, it is uh, marriage is an institution. Yeah. And you see institutions are very complex. Marriage is one of the most complex institutions there is. Yeah. So to understand well how to run, as a man, how to run that institution, because it is my responsibility to run my family. So to understand that you have to have uh, a, a certain set of instructions and those instructions, uh, when you start looking for them out here, it is very hard to get them. Mm -hmm. So for me, I got those instructions from, uh, I believe God gives you the kind of instructions you need. And then now from there, you can operate within your, within the scope you're supposed to operate. Because yeah. if you look at the secular world and you try and emulate what is happening, mm. you're surely going to fail. Mm. Yeah. And I, I like what you've said because You've said when you were younger, you were very much afraid of the institution. You were afraid yeah. of the concept of marriage because yeah. there are all these ideologies. And especially when men think about providing entirely yeah. for the family, you're yeah, the head true. of the family, you're supposed to make decisions, you're supposed to know and be in charge. So it's a bit difficult and there's a certain pressure that comes with just that alone. True. So when, when you were thinking about it, when you were younger, it was different. Uh, but Dana, before you got born again true, and you truly true, understood true, true, it. True. Now, at what point did you feel like you started 
changing your your mindset like fully changing it because i understand also when you when you are new born again christian there's also a lot you need to learn and then the deeper you get into it you also understand that christianity is a marriage between us and christ so at what stage did you really figure out yeah this is something that i truly want not because of maybe the societal pressures and maybe your parental pressures the expectations that are there because you know sometimes you just expected letter bibi tunataka wajuku <laughs> so at what point did it really hit for you to say that i am ready to get married i want to settle down uh, i believe the, the timeline was um, uh, when i actually realized is when i met my wife now mm. back then uh, when we we started dating you realize when you meet the person you're supposed to be with mm. or not even uh, when you meet when you see because sometimes you just see them you are not even talking you don't you're not familiar with each other you just, you just mm. see her and you're like i like to know who this woman is mm. so you there's something that is already has been instilled already in you that mm. now you can be able to identify your your partner because marriage is a commitment for life yeah. so when you have that uh, at the back of your head or the, the back of your mind you can be able now to like you feel something pushing you towards someone for no apparent reason and yeah. then you're like one day let me talk to her mm -hmm. and you talk to her and you find that uh, she's a wonderful person next the thing you know you want to talk her to, to her every day yeah <laughs> and then after that now the journey begins because um uh, i can say for <coughs> for marriage when you kind of uh, sit down and let's uh, you you start you you start thinking of marriage let's say i want to marry and then you like putting down the plans it can become hectic so sometimes mm. it's good to trust uh, the process yeah. trust what you want and trust that it's going to be provided for you when you see her you will know or when you I see like him that. you know i really like that because what you're saying is you just feel sure. and you know and that's what, what most people say and i always wonder how do you know <laughs> like yeah. how do you know because yeah. there's always a list that we have yeah. a list of criteria that we expect mm -hmm. and uh, when you when you see is it someone that checks the list or mm -hmm. some of the the things there that you feel like yeah this is the person mm -hmm. esther when you were picking your husband yeah. how did you know cuz i feel like people who get married yeah. mm -hmm. they just tell you you just know sure. but we want to know the secret how can i know <laughs> cuz sometimes yeah. maybe me yeah. na convince yeah. and maybe it's not the right person yeah. for me right. so wh wh did you have a criteria of expectations mm -hmm. for the father of your children your husband your life yeah. partner mm -hmm. and when you met him were mm -hmm. you checking your list yeah. did you see that yeah mm -hmm. this is someone who i want to be with Thank you so much once again and I would um, I appreciate I appreciate the topic is interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, as at the time I was um, considering my spouse or getting married, I was in campus. And so when you go to campus, your instructions, the instructions from your parents are like I want to go to good school, concentrate, you know. You bring for us make us proud, you know. <coughs> so I go to campus and by the grace of God I was already born again. So I went and joined the Christian Union at the campus and we used to serve God. And the beauty of Christian Union was like you they will always bring speakers who are also spouses or couples who are married Christian marriages. And so this one kept bringing up the idea of marriage like okay so Christian marriages the the function or there's a strategy or there's a there's a path which they take. So this was bringing a new version from what I had known before, you know, having looked at non-Christian marriages and sometimes you are like, no. But so you get a version of the Christian marriages, you oh, meet my spouse, meet my husband, who God gave me. And I was like, hey, this God, does he work with husband and spouses <laughs> like this? And he said, no, it's you yours. You yeah, exactly, that. you know. And I was like, God, I'm so I interested in this. So when I began the journey first year, we used to do a lot of prayers when you begin the, uh, the semester and also towards the end. So then uh, when I joined campus, I was also make the, I was made the, the year representative in the Christian Union. That is where we were. That is, we also had evangelistic team that is forming part of the Christian Union. And so every time I would join the leaders to go for the mountain prayers, and this was a whole week praying and fasting. So even for me, as I kept praying for this, I was like, God, if you give people spouses, I also desire one day, you give me a spouse. And I journeyed through campus, and then I, here comes the gentleman 
who is currently my, my, my husband, and he proposes. But for me, I was so expectant. The, 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 the picture of what I had gotten of the speakers who used to come to us at the Christian Union was like, God brings people, God gives people spouses. So I was like, God, please bring mine, you know. And so to, long, to cut the long story short, went on the prayers, and as I was praying, God gave a vision. And so God giving a vision, I waited for God to confirm this. We came from the mountain, went on with our Christian Union activities. And as I kept denying it, because as you were talking about, I had my personal list. As a lady, you always have the tall, dark, and some. Yeah. And, you know, that list is endless. That There's no human being in that, you know. Who can fit 100%. Ah, there's no, not even <laughs> us, even I, we ourselves, we are not even fitting if they are to have a list. You know, but then I, I, I as, as time went by, God began aligning. As I went, me, I kept praying. I had not told the man of God that you see God has spoken. Him, he had proposed. Actually, he had proposed, but I had said, okay, let me seek the face of God. Mm -hmm. And so as I journeyed through train, telling God that I need you to confirm this. And before we know it, God had aligned. You know, we were doing things together, going to the, he was also in the Christian Union. We were going, he was in the choir, me, I was in the ushering. And before we knew it, the, the brethren were asking, you know, you are in the choir and we see you this sister Esther and it's not allowed, you know. So can you tell us what is going on? And so we had to be, to, to, to make it clear because transparency was important. Yeah. And so with the transparency that came on board, and so everyone knew, but then there was the rule, the 10 to 10 rule, you are not supposed to stay in a man's house up, up to 10 or beyond, or before 10 in the morning, you know. And so that is how my journey began, and we walked through. For me, I was like, God, if it is not your will, then break it, because I was so hungry for the will of God, having seen how marriages were breaking outside there. So I believe, as also um, my, uh, Dennis has also mentioned, is that you will always have that feeling of the kind of guy. And then also, as a lady, you can see a man who is serious. When you sit with him barely five minutes onto the, onto the table, you'll realize a visionary man. Mm -hmm. A lady, As ladies, we love someone who will walk with you the journey. You can see a future in the life of that guy. So again, those are some of the things that were now coming to me as confirmations, even as I journey through. And so that is what made me now down, down, the, down the relationship. Later on, it was like, so what made you say yes? And I was now, I was able to uh, give the experiences I've gone through up to the far that we were. Yeah. yeah. Thank I you. Like that. I like that. Both of you, yeah. you were rooted in faith. Yeah. You really relied on God to make that decision because it's a lifelong commitment. True. It's you're founding a family. It's something that's going to be generational. Yeah. And people don't really sometimes understand how intense marriage mm. is because you're going to be the, the ancestors mm. of a particular yeah. lineage. True. True. So you have to pick your partners very, yeah. very well. Anyway. Dennis, were you looking out for certain characters in uh, in your wife? Did you spot some things? Because umesema ulimona ukajua tu huju. Nyeye. Were you looking out for some yeah. for some traits in her to say that eh cuz kutunamanga yeah. lazima kuna wife material to do traits. Yeah. Were you looking out for some things even while you were dating and saying okay, this can make um, her a good wife. Yeah. This can make her a good mother. What were some of the things that you were looking out for? Uh, funny enough um uh the, how it goes like, and uh, I believe this is uh, something uh, a lot of men can attest to. You always have this ideology at the back of your mind, this is what I want, this mm -hmm. what. But when you actually get down to it, when you get down to the critical moment, like uh, this is the person now here, a lot of those factors sometimes go out the window <laughs> because, um, for instance, let me um, try and simplify. Um, when, uh, when God uh, made Adam, the man, and the man went to sleep and uh, God took out a, rib for a, a rib from him and then he made, he fashioned him a woman. The man woke up and uh, God displayed the woman to him. Yeah. The man was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is the flesh of my flesh, the rib, the, the bone of my bone. Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, I'll name you woman because you've come from me. And uh, from that moment, they became, he became, uh, she became his wife. Yeah. So sometimes uh, the complexity of uh, marriage and uh, choosing your partner, sometimes it can, uh, you ca it can seem so complex, but sometimes it can be also very simple. Like when you see her, you're like, this is the, the person I want to make a wife. Now, if you had the, the ideology, you're like, this is what I wanted f from a woman. I want her to be dressing like this. Those come later on. When mm. you, I, you've seen her, you've identified, that's it. Yeah. And uh, you can, and you, uh, a lot of people can try to tell you, like, you know, she's not the girl, she, the, her personality and yours, we know her. Mm. They're not, like, matching. You, you, know, you can hear none of it. 
when you've decided like this is her, it, you can go. It. And that is uh, one of the recipes of uh, making a marriage work because um, you can have a lot of uh, pressure. You can have pressure from everywhere. But when you're like, in your mind, you, you, you decided this is the woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Uh, it's very hard to get, get out of there because mm. you, from the moment you saw her, you decided that this is what I want. Yeah, you whether just know. Whether anything happens, whether mm. she, the, her personality I don't like, mm. we'll work on that later, but this is what I mm. want. Yeah. And that is the funny thing about marriage. <laughs> and that's also, maybe there's an aspect of love there. Because yeah. you roho ikipenda, yeah. true, true. <laughs> And uh, I want to hear from you as we continue with this conversation. You can go on our platforms at Y254. Nimekuliza, do you consider getting married? Is it something that you see yourself doing? Is it in your future? Do you see yourself really settling down and getting married to one person and settling with them for the rest of your life? That's one thing I want to hear from you as we progress with this conversation. We are demystifying marriage. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning so many things as we move along. Because as um, you're saying, Esther, mm -hmm. the truth is, mm -hmm. and Dennis, you're saying, sometimes when you meet that person, the list goes mm -hmm. out the window. True. And at some point, giving my personal experience, mm -hmm. there was a type I had in my mind. Yeah. Kuna type unasema, yeah, this yeah. is the guy. Yeah. But then realistically, yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> maybe this is not the best yeah, yeah. choice sure. long term. Because when you think about a life partner, when mm -hmm. you think about the father of your children, mm -hmm. even going down to how he's going to relate with your friends, family, and all those things, there are certain things that you have to factor yeah. in. And uh, I'm wondering, before both of you decided to settle down, before you, you chose this person, you've said you consulted with God. Mm -hmm. But did you consult with any other like mm -hmm. religious person? Did you mm -hmm. consult with your mother? What were those conversations? How mm -hmm. did you bring up to your mom and yeah. your dad, by the way, kunam tu ni meona. Now I think I want to settle with him. Yeah. Now what should I do? What advice did your mother give you? Thank you so much for that. <coughs> and I want to say that, funny enough, my parents, were not the type that would sit you down and tell you now it's this and that. Yeah, my daddy would try, but for him it was on the discipline aspect, like, you know, go to school, study, come back, you know. But this aspect, no, it was not in their list. They couldn't sit you down. So may I remember, I, uh, when my guy had come and we, he had, for me, I'm talking about the visionary guy, so he was like, I need you to go, we need you to go, we need you to pray. So first of all, we were like, we are writing prayer items. And so we need to pray for our parents because there's going to come to a time whereby you need to meet my parents and I need to meet yours. Can we pray that God give us favor so that when you come to that time, point in time, then we are in, com in agreement. So for me, what I did, I went back home and I told mommy, tell me how you met daddy. And he was like, what's that? You know, she was not even expecting, they're not used <laughs> to it. But from where I was coming from, I was like, I want this, this, I want this conversation to hear how it stood. And she's like, you know what? You don't even want to hear the story of your daddy. For him, he just came and he sent fair that I should come and I didn't go and all those things. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, but for me, I decided to take the lead and tell her, Mommy, you know what? This is this, there's a guy, and I know this and that. And uh, by before we knew it, God was doing so much. We're doing ministry work, mission work. So I had organized mission work at home. And so by the fact we went there, I told him that the guy is part of the team, but he didn't come. So slowly, slowly, by the aspect of the, I think it was just grace. And then when seasons come, I think when it's your time, as the way you were telling us before when we were on the break, is <coughs> there's a season when it reaches, even the, the, the God causes the, whole, the elements of the earth to align. Yeah. You tell your parents and she said, this is okay. And she introduced, she told my daddy. And so at, as time went by, daddy knew that I have somebody even, despite the fact that I had not sat him down. When I went to his parents' side and the, the, the response was like, can you marry quickly, marry quickly? And I was like, <laughs> really? It's not what we expected. So I also believe that when you com, uh, commit everything unto the hands of God, there's a way he makes everything to align. There's a way he makes everything successful. So I really love this topic of demystifying marriages. We should not fear as they knew yeah. the people who are looking forward into getting to marriage, it is unique as we had said. But yeah. just as we have said, it's a partnership. So again, it is important that you, as you're going there, are you ready to become a partner? Yeah. A partnership means that I'm bringing my own, you're bringing your own, and then when we join together, we succeed. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that two are better than one because they have a high reward. And also when one falls, one can lift the other up. So again, you need to be whole as a single person. 
before you come into this institution of marriage. So I also would encourage the single people that do not fear the institution of marriage, but again, be ready for it. Be, be okay with yourself. Yeah. Emotionally, spiritually, you want career growth, grow with it. So that marriage will just come and compliment you, but not, don't expect happiness out of there. So that when you go, there's also something you bring on the table. Okay, I didn't want to come up with uh, But again, you're contributing, okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to bring the aspect of like, what do you bring on the table? But yeah. when we are partners, it means that there's a, we support each other through the journey. And so that yeah. one will make marriage succeed. Thank I you. like that. Mm. I really like that because mm. you have to be in agreement. Yeah. You have to, both of you have to be in sync so that it works and when you mesema you have to be whole in yourself yeah. so that when you go into this partnership yeah. you're whole in usiye tu unategemea huyu mtu ndakupatia happiness siju yeah. support siju what you have to be complete in who you are sure. so that you get into that union yeah. and there are a few other things that i want us to touch on particularly with the finances because mm -hmm. Dennis brought up something uh, interesting mm -hmm that so many guys think that's the norm mm -hmm. of marriage that mm -hmm. men will give a hundred percent because when you say ma that question yeah. of what do you bring to the table yeah. that's one question that people ask mm -hmm. in this dating senior squeezy yeah. that's the first thing that people will go to and they'll focus on yeah. the financial maybe yeah. the physical things yeah. but they don't think about every other mm -hmm. aspect so i want us to touch on that when we come back from the break so i want mm -hmm. us to take a short break and meanwhile go on our platforms at y254 and engage with us niambie do you consider getting married is it something that you think about is it something that you'll even maybe do in the next few years ama do you not want to get married completely let me know by going to our platforms at 254 and i will sample those comments when we come back from the break let's take a very short break and stay tuned this is power talk <laughs> 